this episode we leave Dublin to explore two nearby distilleries, Coolies and the Great Northern Distillery, where we run into unexpected situations. Where were we? Oh yeah, we were leaving Dublin and ready to tackle the first 90 kilometers of our trip to pay our respects to a distillery named Coolies. Still a little on the shock from the wheel clamp adventure and a bit tired, we set sails highly motivated. The weather was better than announced, it was a Saturday noon, what could possibly go wrong? Mm, the visitor center could be closed on Saturdays, that could go wrong. But who cares? We didn't. In 1782, a certain Walter Teeling opened his craft distillery in Marrowbone Lane, Dublin, which is the same street that Marrowbone Distillery, run by James Steen, was on. And to give you a little context, that was right after Bow Street Distillery had opened and right before Mr. and Mrs. Jameson arrived in Dublin. Only nine years later, he handed over business to his son, who was only 22 years old at the time, and who ran business successfully for a couple of years before it was swallowed by the Marrowbone Distillery. Well, that might not be the best story ever told, but there is a season two. A few years later, 150 years to be precise, an ancestor of Walter Teeling wrote two papers about the decline of Irish whiskey while he was studying on Harvard University in Boston. And it shouldn't take long until this dude named John Teeling should get his chance to make things right. In the 1980s it became pretty obvious that the so-called Irish Distillers Group, at the time being already including Bushmills, were not gonna make it on their own. And a takeover battle started in which Dr. Teeling, who made a fortune with the refloating of struggling companies, offered a considerable sum. The highest bidder though was the French trust Pernod Ricard, but giving up seems not to be an option in John Teeling's playbook. He and a couple of friends bought a distillery in Riverstown from the state, where out of potatoes pure alcohol was produced. They purchased some ancient pot stills and a mash tun, and renamed the distillery to Cooley. Additionally, they could acquire some of the most traditional whiskey brand names in Irish history. What was missing, though, was an appropriate space to major the casks. So they bought Locke's distillery in Kilbegan in order to use the warehouses. The distillery itself used to be a whiskey museum already, but more on this later. As soon as their first whiskey had reached three years and a day of age, it was bottled. The company needed money. Due to the fact that actually two distilleries lived under the same roof, a grain and a malt distillery, they were able to bottle two sorts of whiskey, Turconnell and Kilbegan. After Pernod Ricard had acquired the Irish Distillers Group and even Bushmills was taken over by Diageo, Cooley Distillery used to be the only left Irish whiskey distillery in the whole country for quite a while actually. A sellout to the Irish Distillers Group could be prevented by the Antitrust Division, but independence was over in 2012 when Beam Suntory took over Cooley Distillery. There is a happy end to that story, but we'll talk about that a little later. Before we would undertake the 200 km journey to our overnight accommodations all the way up north, we had planned a stop at the nearby Great Northern Distillery in Dundalk. Although our recent experiences had significantly contributed to the moderation of expectations concerning visiting options. And sure enough, Thank you. 
The Great Northern Brewery used to be a beer brewery for many years, owned by Diageo being the second biggest brewery all over Ireland. In response to an increasing demand for lager beer, it was converted into a lager brewery with the help of German master brewer Dr. Hermann Münder, producing the beloved Harp lager beer. How could they? In 2008, Diageo announced the closing and the move of operations to Dublin or St. James Gate. 2013, the gates had been closed for good. John Teeling, a man we will meet a few times along the way, bought the property in 2014 and proclaimed to the world that distilling had begun in 2015. With an annual capacity of 5 million liters on the pot stills and even twice as much on the column stills, the Great Northern Distillery became the second largest whiskey distillery and with Middleton Distillery and Cooley's only the third grain distillery in Ireland, producing mainly for those distilleries that manufacture on pot stills only. After there was nothing left to see, we started our 260 km journey to Port Rush all the way up in the north. We would pass the border between the Republic of Ireland and Northern Ireland that is hardly noticeable. And by the way, does not matter at all with Irish whiskey. It is always called Irish whiskey, no matter where it comes from. The whole Brexit thing would have a massive impact on two Ireland's whiskey industry. A hard border would definitely cause significant delays in transport of goods, starting with grain and malt and even affecting all three types of Irish whiskey that underlie heavy freight traffic all across Ireland. Meanwhile, we enjoyed the free voyage along the exceptionally beautiful landscape of the Emerald Isle. Well, here we go. This is the Port Rush townhouse. We did like 260 kilometers and we are in between bush mills and the Giant's Causeway. So we'll do Giant's Causeway tomorrow morning and then we'll go to the bush mills distillery. But first of all, we need a pop and we need some whiskey and some food and some fun to forget last night. Let's go. Thank you. 
Despite rain and storm in the next episode, we visit the unbelievable Giants Causeway and afterwards pay our respects to Bushmills, the oldest legal distillery in the world. We need your help, so our channel can keep growing. Maybe you know someone interested in all things whiskey that you can recommend us to. Check out our playlist, Vlogs in English. Each click and every minute playtime does help. And we do enjoy each and every comment, so please feel free. Please take the chance to subscribe to the channel and hit the little bell, so you will be notified whenever something's going on. It's all free. Thank you.